students welcome to the session welcome to sprint text icsc and this is shweta roy your english master teacher at vedantu hope all of you are doing super amazing and today the story that we are going to cover is a humorous story by rk narayan that is a horse and two goats so the basic theme of course is cross cultural difference and the humor arising out of that you all know already so if you haven't um, if you have somehow missed the lectures on this particular chapter i would definitely suggest you to go ahead and watch the previous videos related to this particular chapters oman series right so there i have explained the entire chapter i hope this will be very very helpful to all of you guys. guys and now we will be beginning with the session with the three marks and the four mark question so before beginning with that uh, by now you already know the schedule so we are here a horse and two goats that is go that is what we are going to cover so we are left with few more uh, you know chapters uh, we, we are going to continue till 27th along with that physics math is going to continue till 26th of feb and uh, remaining uh, uh, you know subjects sst bio chemistry they are all going to continue till 27 parallelly with english okay guys so before starting of the session do hit the like button share the video amongst your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel all right so let's begin with the homework question guys of the previous chapter thank you so much for posting all your lovely comments in the homework section in the in the comment section for the homework answer so in case you have missed it guys this is a model answer which will definitely help you to solve the answer solve the question okay so this is the first extract guys it's the very beginning of the story okay talking about the uh, village okay the village of kritam and uh, definitely uh, you know <clears throat> what's the meaning of uh, the word kritam and how it is just a microscopic dot on the map all right and uh, let's see what's the question so the very first question is definitely describing the town of kritram in the story kritam sorry in the story a uh, horse and two goats so definitely you can understand that the name itself is very ironical so please mention that it is just in contrast with the uh, you know uh, because the name means coronet or crown right but it is definitely it is the tiniest village in tamil nadu it's denoted by a microscopic dot on the district survey map so that makes it very very the name very very ironical and there are about 30 houses in the village with one house made of bricks and cement brick and cement so you can uh, and also it was painted a brilliant yellow and blue okay that also you can mention and also um you know you can mention uh, this fact that in tamil it means okay we have already mentioned a crown on the brow of the subcontinent okay so it is a crown okay but actually it is a very tiny micro it's like a microscopic dot right so uh, otherwise we've mentioned all of the things just mentioned that it was you know painted yellow brilliant yellow and blue all over with okay so you can also mention that painted a brilliant so that would complete your answer all right guys and also mentioned that uh, this makes because this means coronet or crown over the brow of the subcontinent so uh, being a tiniest village you know uh, even being a tiniest village uh, it, that did not prevent him to name it as kritam which means crown or coronet okay guys so that is something which is definitely grandiose right so that makes it very ironical mention these points that will be definitely uh, you know enhancing your answer or enriching your answer next passage um the other house is distributed in four streets etc etc so continuing uh, the description of the houses and muni's house muni's was the last house you know that right last house in the fourth street beyond which stretched the fields in his prosperous days muni had owned so this is talking about the difference between the uh, oh, you know the previous scenario and the present scenario so previously he was definitely very prosperous how do we know that because he owned a flock of sheep and goats okay 
So let's see what's the question for this particular passage. How did the big house differ from the other houses in the village? Okay, so this is basically, so that is why I did not take this up in the previous answer. But if the answer is for three or four marks, guys, you can also include the points that we are including in this answer. That is, how is the big house different from the other houses? You can definitely include that. Since we are doing it separately, so I'm, I have not taken up that uh, in that question. Okay, I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing this separately. But you can, when you are writing it as an answer, you have to mingle the uh, points from this answer as well that is going to describe the entire village because when you're describing the village you should describe the houses also right so big house uh, the big houses were different from the other houses that is the point that you can also mention and also elaborate on that taking help from this particular slide i hope you've understood this right so the big house was built with bricks and cement it was painted beautifully i've already mentioned this part in the previous uh you know question there were paintings of gods and gargoyles and uh, the other houses were made of bamboo thatch so this is the very 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 uh, clear differentiation so this is a kind of class difference okay so the rich and the uh, you know you the high and the low very clear uh, difference between the high and the low right so that also you can mention okay the other houses were made of bamboo thatch straw and mud the big house indicates that the owner must be a wealthy so definitely you can talk about the distribution of the men the author mentions very clearly the distribution of wealth which is again one of the very 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 important points regarding the theme okay so very clear indication of the distribution of wealth right but the rest of the villagers so wealth is only uh, you know, concentrated in the hands of few. So, you will definitely talk about uh, the distribution of wealth which was unequal because you could see at one hand the big house, you can clearly understand the difference between the big houses and the small houses, right? So, that leads to the class difference. That leads to the higher and the lower people. I mean, uh, the rich and the poor. So, that, that leads to the unequal distribution of wealth, which is, you know, the wealth is concentrated only in the hands of the rich people. And therefore, they are having this kind of elaborate houses. So, that is very clearly mentioned by the author here in the story. So, please do mention, highlight this point in your answer so that you can enrich that. Okay, guys, with that, we will move ahead with the next passage. His fortunes had declined gradually unnoticed. So here we are talking about who is this his? We are talking about our central character or our protagonist of the story, that is Muni. Okay, so as we talked about how, you know, he was very prosperous, but now, unfortunately, his fortunes, that is his money has declined, right? From a flock of 40, so this is clearly indicating uh, the uh, decline okay from a flock of 40 which he drove into a pen at night his stock now became uh, came down to two goats so this leads us to the title of the story as well a horse and two goats so he now had only two goats which were tethered to the trunk of tied up okay to the trunk of the tree okay etc etc the morning he got six okay just talking about the drumsticks etc so let's quickly check what is the question related to this particular, um, you know, uh, extract. What was Muni's daily routine? And how many cattle did he have in his prosperous days? You can see the mark distribution is four. So definitely we will see this as two plus two. There are two questions, so we can distribute it likewise. So let us look at the answer, guys. Muni lived in an extremely small village of Tamil Nadu called Krittam. Krittam okay. His house was lost, la, the last in the fourth street beyond which there were stretched uh, fields. He had once a stock, uh, once a flock of 40 sheep and goats in his prosperous days. And he used to set out the, uh, set out the daily morning for uh, grazing them, okay, to the highway a couple of miles away. So that was his daily routine. He used to graze the goats. Okay, couple of miles away, he had stretched fields right beyond uh, his house. So there he used to go.
for grazing the houses. There was a clay statue of a horse where he used to sit on its pedestal while his cattle grazed around. Now here again we uh, we see the we have two characters in the very title, right? One is goat. The second one is horse. So we have come across both the characters in this particular answer, right? So he had a crook at the end of a bamboo pole and a snap foliage from the avenue trees uh, to feed his flock. That's how he used to feed his flock. He collected the bundle of sticks and carried them home for the fuel. So that was all about his daily routine. And how many cattle did he have? That also we have already mentioned. Okay, so next question is, next uh, passage, okay, next passage, you have only four teeth in your jaw. Now, here is again a, um, an element of humor that we find, okay, but your craving is for big things, okay, all right, get the stuff for the sauce. So, this is Muni's wife. When Muni got very, very monotonous by having the same drumstick again and again, he wanted something uh, different. So what is the uh, wife of Muni saying? That you, you are growing old, only having four teeth in the jaw, but you, your cravings cannot be satisfied, right? All right, get the stuff for the sauce and I will prepare it for you. All right. After all, next year, you may not be alive to ask for anything. So again, a very dark humor over here, right? But get me, but first get me all the stuff, including a measure of rice, etc, etc. So she is uh, talking about uh, getting the stuff so that she could prepare the sauce that Muni wanted to have. Let's see uh, the question related to this extract. Why was Muni's wife angry with him? What did she ask him to bring? Muni was tired of eating the boiled drumstick, as I told you. So he had a craving to chew the drumstick out of the sauce, the gravy that we call, right? So at this, his wife got angry and rebuked him, saying that he had only four teeth in his jaw. That is, he is old, okay? He is, uh, he is not right now, you know, at that age to have all those delicacies, right? So, therefore, so you can say that he has crossed his age, according to his wife, to have delicacies. Or you can say cravings, right? So, uh, therefore... Uh, she asked him uh, to bring all the ingredients if, because he wanted to have that sauce. Okay, so uh, what were the ingredients? All these were the ingredients, right, for making the sauce as their store was empty because they did not have all these items at, uh, in their home. She agreed as she was doubtful whether he would be alive for the following year to ask for anything. So she was like, okay, let me satisfy his wish. Uh, I'm not very sure whether next time he would be even alive to ask me all this. So now what is whatever he likes, let me fulfill his desire, right? So that was all, guys. Next question is comment on the appraisal of humor of shock man by Muni. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> this was at, uh, at the context when, you know, the shop man had uh, given a humorous comment and Muni had appreciated or appraised it, right? What was Muni's response? Now, uh, sorry, for pur purpose behind doing this. So why was there was a, although he appreciated it, but there was a very deep purpose for Muni's, purpose, uh, Muni's <laughs> appraisal. So let us check what was the humor all about first on being asked about his wife to bring the stuff of preparing the sauce muni went to the shop in the third street he was impatient but the shopkeeper paid no attention uh, to him okay so muni kept on clearing his thought coughing and sneezing so since the shopkeeper you know that he already uh, owed a lot of money to the shopkeeper so the shopkeeper did not want to give him anything now okay so he was not paying heed to muni and what did muni do he was keeping on clearing his throat coughing and sneezing so that he uh, he could pay his attention and finally he did ask him what ails you you will fly off that seat into the gutter if you sneeze so hard young man so this young man was something which 
made Muni laugh because a while ago he was called an old man, okay, uh, who would who would supposed to who was supposed to die the following year, whose uh, living was definitely very doubtful for the next year, right? So Muni. Uh, uh, therefore, Muni laughed, but there was a purpose. He did not laugh without any purpose, right? Uh, so he laughed in order to please him when he called him a young man. Okay, so this made the shopkeeper happy and he liked his sense of humor. So both of them, uh, so that both of them could develop a bond. Now, why did he want to develop this bond? Because he wanted to uh, ask from the shopkeeper all the items, at least one or two items of food on the promise of later repayment because he did not have money. Whenever the shopkeeper was in good mood, he gave, okay, he gave and he agreed for later uh, payment. But uh, when he lost his temper, he refused and he barked at him for daring to ask for credit. So that is why he wanted to build up that rapport with the shopkeeper to create a good atmosphere, a congenial atmosphere, so that you know the shopkeeper could give him something uh, on the promise. I mean, uh, you know, on the promise of later repayment, right? So that was the real purpose. I hope you've understood this. So, guys, I hope you've understood and you are enjoying the sessions. So, we will have much more fun, guys, and a deeper understanding of all the subjects, all the six subjects, guys, in our platform. So, we can gain 100% knowledge and score 100% marks. You just need to visit the link in the description box. You can have unlimited live classes with fun and high-level quizzes. Also, you could compete with the students throughout the world. Okay, you can even the replays. Let's say you missed some class, uh, you missed a class and you want to watch the replay. That's also there, but the replays are also very interesting because you have live quiz questions even there. So in the YouTube platform, we uh, do not have live sessions always, but in our platform, we have all the sessions live and we can also watch the replays even those are live plus we have quiz questions at well, you know for each and every session in each and every session we have quiz questions we have the leaderboards at the end of the session okay even the replays have leaderboards the, and then you can download the content with handwritten notes of the master teachers. Plus, there is a very, very good feature that we have, which is uh, which we cannot have in YouTube is our doubt solving, in-class doubt solving, because we have a special team of class teachers in the class who will be there for you catering to all your doubts. So you will be getting your doubts solved in the class, guys. That is something which is super amazing because no more piling up of your doubts, right? And assignments after each and every session, quality tests we conduct and we also give you the performance report so that you will be uh, you know, uh, and these tests are definitely on an all India basis. You can see that you can compete with the students throughout the world. So from various places, you know, the students come. And if you still face any problem, let's say you have a problem in an, any particular chapter, you can also have a special micro course related to that particular chapter that too for free. So you have free 5,000 plus micro courses and a lot of crash courses have come up guys in our platform right now. It has already begun for you people. So you can have all of them free, no uh, extra amount to be charged for all that. So uh, that too, so less is more. Yes, I'll show you how is less more. You can just visit the link in the description box and pin comment, use the coupon code SWREPRO and we have the 50% off and this has been extended guys, extended for all of you to avail, okay? So we want the maximum of you to avail the 50% discount. So that is why we have extended till, it, this was only till 14th, but we have definitely extended this uh, because, uh, you know, for you and we do care for you. That is why we are there for you till the end. And also the offer has been extended. So, but when is the offer going to be closed? We do not know. So I would definitely recommend you to join us at the earliest guys and that is going to give you a complete 50% off 
you can see over here if you apply this coupon code this is going to be the price that brings down the price to 3.3 rupees per class i don't think any uh, other course is as inexpensive as this guys so don't forget to join us jo uh, visit the link use the coupon code swrepro and now we are left with two more questions this is the next passage only on the outskirts did he lift his head and look up etc etc the advantage of this that he could see the uh, okay highway and see the lorries and blue passes uh, okay let's see what is the question from this particular passage which was his usual place for grazing his goats we've already seen that right so muni used to take his goats on the outskirts of the town okay he bullied the goats until they meandered along that means he used to bully the goats mean you know wo hota hai na to beat up the goats right so that is uh, you know bullying the goats right until they meandered uh, along to the foot of the horse statue so until they went there he used to you know uh, make sure that they go so that is bullying okay uh, muni then sat on the pedestal for the whole day and he used to let the goats uh, goats graze the benefit of sitting there was that he could watch the highway and see the lorries and buses that passed through the hills and seeing that gave him a sense of happiness why because he felt that he belonged to a larger world the pedestal was as large uh, enough he could move around under it as the sun soared high he could also crouch under the belly of the horse for a shade so that is his that was his usual you know kind of um, uh, enjoyable uh, day that he used to pass uh, while grazing his goats right so that was his kind of you know time pass right Okay. Next is I'm sure you know when this horse was made," said the red man and smiled, uh, ingratiatingly. Muni reached to the relaxed atmosphere by smiling himself, etc. So this is the kind of conversation, okay, between the red man and the uh, and Muni. Okay. The question for this is: In what possible way Muni tried to ward off the trouble? So he first initially thought that he is a trouble. Initially, he misinterpreted the red man as a policeman. Remember? So what was the, what were the possible ways in which he wanted to drive away uh, that red man, the foreigner? Muni became afraid uh, of seeing the card in the foreigner's hand. He wanted to run away, but then he remembered his age, as told by the shopkeeper, and thought it would be better to surrender rather than to get caught. And then an idea struck his mind that he would uh, he could ward off the trouble by talk. So he started. He initiated a conversation. Okay, so he started. talking in tamil in a simple manner he swore before him that he had seen nothing and knew nothing of the case if the murder had been committed the convict wouldn't be able to escape okay according to him god was watching everything and pleading the foreigner not to <clears throat> ask him anything so he was constantly trying to plead but he was speaking in tamil right so here we can see the cross culture that the author is trying to show us exhibit okay he also added that a body had been found muti muti uh, uh, mutilated and thrown under a tree between kritam and kuppam a few weeks ago but you, we all know that you know there was a huge misinterpretation and a gap in the conversation so this is leading to a conversation gap nobody could understand each other right so with that guys we have completed the 3 and the 4 marks questions the very important questions for from this particular chapter and here is your homework question guys what did muni explain the american on being distracted from his continued explanation okay so here is the passage okay so i would uh, definitely uh, uh, you know ask you to write this homework answer i would wait for your beautiful comments in the comment section regarding this homework answer and also if you haven't watched the um, whole explanation guys please do watch the whole explanation uh, in the uh, umang series all right guys so with that uh, the next session would be on hearts and hands till then take care
and bye bye do not miss the next session do not forget to visit the link in the description box and use the coupon code swrepro thank you guys take care also hit the like button share the video amongst your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't bye bye